You know, um, as you look at this implant, uh, if you're a surgeon, and it sounds like most of you have, are placing the implants, you have immediately some misgivings and also philosophically wondering why in the world would you uh, narrow the neck up by the cervical bone? Uh, why would you do that? And um, there's a lot of questions around that. Maybe, maybe stability, maybe it would be not tight fitting there when you first put it in or, or whatever. Uh, but I want you to think about, take a, 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 another viewpoint, and that is look at an implant placement from coronal to apical. So let's say you've placed the implant body and you're looking down at it, at its placement into a site. Say, say like, a, you know, a central incisor site. Well, that should actually be looking up in that case, but. But what you would find is you would see a rather narrow amount of bone facially, maybe more in, in the mesial distal area and even more in the paddle side. But that, that bone is extremely valuable because at the crest, that bone, if it's lost for any reason, such as a dihiscence, that's where you can lose your aesthetics, or you might even get in get chronic infection and lose the uh, potentially lose the implant. So when you think about that from that vantage point, looking down over the top where you've done your prep, that little little ring of bone that circles around the uh, the cervical part of the implant body, that ring of bone, you want to not have a dihiscence in it. You want it to be continuous and you want it to be beefy. That's why in the anterior maxilla, many of us will graft out uh, the buccal plate so it's two or three millimeters thick uh, in order to, you know, uh, ensure that you don't get an easy amount of bone loss over time. So that ring of bone is very, very uh, valuable. We'll start thinking about um, where you need that ring of bone. Well, you certainly need that ring of bone um, in the dentate areas. So areas next to teeth or areas where implants are side to side. That's very important. So if you had a tapering implant and kind of a tight uh, placement location, uh, that, that taper is going to extend into the uh, area that supports the bone under a papilla. Or it may come close to causing a dihiscence in the facial area. So as you start thinking about that, you might say, well, why don't we narrow that a little bit or make it so it's not as tapered up there? And Dr. Danza, who was a prosthodontist uh, and looked at things from a re end, you know, restorative standpoint, which uh, myself being an oral surgeon, I have to admit, I judged my cases by the surgical moment. That's not the way to judge a, an implant case, right? So any restorative dentist knows, hey, let's, uh, let's put a crown on there and let's wait a couple of years and then we'll judge our case and see how it's, how it's holding up. And so what Danza showed, and this is in about 2007 to 2010 or so, and he published some papers about this. What he showed was that ring of bone if he narrowed the neck a little bit, that ring of bone was a little bit wider, a little beefier, and less likely to um, uh, get defiled by bacteria and, uh, and be lost from resorption. But there is another thing that I want you to think about. Um, when we have a papillae, sure, next to teeth, supracrestal fibers can actually hold that up in place 
if the bone is absent, sure, that can happen and it does happen. We've all seen that happen, but it's it's a highly risky situation. So that are, if there is some detachment and there's no bone underneath it, that the pillow will collapse and get a black black triangle. And this happens in side by side teeth or teeth next to an implant or implants next to each other. So said in another way, whatever we do in implant dentistry, let's try and preserve the supporting osseous structure underneath the papilla. So the subpapillary bone, that is just gold. And so narrowing the neck a little bit, it's, it seems like it's a lot, it's kind of a visual thing, uh, but it's not a lot. So when you put it in, you don't have a big gap there. Uh, you, you know, you'll have to just experience that in placing them. But it does go in the right direction to provide a more beefy bone in the subpapillary area and more beefy bone in the straight facial area. And so this, uh, when I was just describing it to, to uh, Wayne one day, I said this, this implant, which is called the ultimate implant, this implant is the Lord of the ring, the Lord of the ring of bone. It's the best um, restorative strategy built into an implant that you will see in, uh, in implant dentistry.